Here we're going to explore a nice constant known as the Euler Mascheroni constant. And so it's defined via the following limit. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus half plus third all the way up to 1 over n minus the natural log of n. And generally it's denoted by the letter gamma. And so we're going to show two things about this constant. First is that this limit indeed converges. So we have something to define in the first place. We'll actually show that it converges to a number between 0 and 1. And then next we'll prove the following integral identity for defining this constant as well. Okay, so let's start by proving this convergence property. And we're going to do that by taking this limit and rewriting it a little bit. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity. I'll leave this first bit the same. So I've got 1 plus half all the way up to 1 over n. But now I'm going to recognize that this second bit, this natural log of n, is actually the area, area under a certain curve. It's the area under the curve 1 over x from 1 to n. So let's write that out. So the integral from 1 to n of 1 over x dx. Great. And that's because if we take the antiderivative of this, we'll definitely get the natural log of x evaluated at n, and 1 will give us the natural log of n. OK, so that's good. So next thing that I want to do is take this integral and break it up into a sum of pieces. And those pieces will be intervals from 1 to 2, and then 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and then finally n minus 1 to n. So let's see. I can write this as the limit as n goes to infinity. I'll take this and rewrite it with summation notation just to put it in ter terms that will combine with this nicely. So I've got my sum as k goes from 1 up to n of 1 over k. So that's this term. And then this can be rewritten as the sum as k goes from 1 up to n minus 1 of the integral from k to k plus 1 of 1 over x dx. So we have something like that. So you might say, well, why do we end at, end at n minus 1 here? Well, that's because we want this final integral to end at n. So if we were to just look at this carefully, so this bit right here, this sum that we've created, is in fact the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3 plus all the way up to the integral from k minus 1 to k. And if you count this up, this is exactly k minus 1 terms here. Okay, so next thing that I want to do is maybe put these two things together. But before doing that, I'll take this guy and break it into two pieces. I'll break it into the sum as k goes from 1 to n minus 1, and then the nth term. So this will give me something like this. I'll have the sum as k goes from 1 up to n minus 1 of 1 over k plus 1 over n. Great. And now I can combine these two sums that go from 1 to n minus 1 together. That'll leave me with something like this. I have the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum as k goes from 1 to n minus 1 of 1 over k minus the integral from k to k plus 1 of 1 over x dx. So that's from combining these two sums together. And then finally plus a 1 over n at the end. And then next, I'll notice that 1 over x is a decreasing function. So if I plug in the upper endpoint, I get the smallest number possible. But plugging in the smallest number possible along with this minus sign sets up the following inequality. So our thing right here will be less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as k goes from 1 up to n minus 1 of 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. And then finally, outside of all of that, we have 1 over n. So just to be careful, we have a unit interval here, in other words, an interval of length 1. 
And so if we replace one over X with its minimum value here, since we're subtracting, we end up with something which is larger than what we started with. But that gives us exactly this thing right here. But now we can see what this is just by writing some terms out and seeing what cancels. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity. And then we'll have one minus a half plus a half minus one third. So that's the first two terms here. Then let's maybe write the last term. That'll be plus one over n minus one minus one over n. And then finally we have this plus one over n term at the very end. But we've set up this telescoping action. This half cancels this half. This third will cancel what comes next. This one over n minus one cancels something that came before. And this one over n cancels this one over n. And we see that our limit is equal to one. But that by itself doesn't show that this limit exists. It shows that if it were to exist, it would not exceed one. But it could be bouncing around between zero and one. We know that it's bouncing around between zero and one because this number is always positive. But you can also test that this is an increasing sequence. And by testing that it's an increasing sequence, along with being bounded above by the monotone sequence theorem, we'll see that it converges. Okay, so let's get rid of this and then we'll show that this is an increasing sequence. So I've renamed the terms of my sequence a sub n. And on the last board, we showed that every term of this sequence was less than one via a limit. And as a quick homework exercise, you guys can show that every term of this sequence is bigger than zero. And this trivial result that says that a n converges if and only if a new sequence b n, which is defined to be a n minus one over n also converges. So let's notice that this b n is still bounded. Now it's bounded by minus one and one. And so next we'll show that it's an increasing sequence, thus it will be an increasing bounded sequence and by the monotone sequence theorem it will converge. But then if BN converges by this homework exercise, AN converges, which is our first goal over here. Okay, so let's jump into that. We will calculate this object. So we'll have BN plus one minus BN. So let's notice that'll be one plus half plus all the way up to one over n. Notice we do not end at one over n plus one because that gets subtracted off. And then minus the natural log of n plus one. And then from that we subtract one plus half plus all the way up to one over n minus one minus the natural log of n. Okay. So next up, let's notice that everything here up to the one over n term cancels with everything here. Good. And then we are left with one over n minus, so I'm gonna write it like this, the natural log of n plus one minus the natural log of n. Good. But now I can rewrite this guy as an area under a curve. Notice it's the area under the curve one over x from x equals n to n plus one. So that gives me this is equal to one over n minus the integral from n to n plus one of one over x dx. Okay, so that's starting to look good. But now we can introduce our inequality. One over x is a decreasing function. So that means it achieves its largest value at n, which means if we plug in here along with the subtraction, we will end up with something smaller. So let's see that this whole thing is going to be bigger than one over n and then minus the integral from n to n plus one of one over n dx, but that's equal to zero. So now looking in at the extreme left and right hand side here, we've achieved this inequality, which proves this inequality and thus eventually proves that this a n converges, meaning we've taken care of this first goal. And now we're ready to approach our second goal, which is this constant can be exhibited as the following integral. So we've got the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x times the natural log of x dx. 
So I'm going to start by rewriting this as the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to n of e to the minus x times the natural log of x dx. That's just a standard definition really for this improper integral. Next, I'm going to use a limiting fact about e to the x. So let's maybe recall the following fact, which we will not prove. And that is that e to the minus x is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus x over n to the n. Okay, so that's a standard exercise from maybe a first semester calculus class. So since we've already got a limit with respect to n in here, we can just replace e to the minus x with this object right here. So that's going to give us the limit as n approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to n. Now we have 1 minus x over n to the n times the natural log of x dx. So that's looking good. Now we're going to do a bit of a substitution. So the substitution that we'll do here will simplify this 1 minus x over n type term. So we'll set t equal to 1 minus x over n. So let's notice that just by solving for x, we get that x is equal to n times 1 minus t, which tells us that dx is equal to minus n times dt. Now let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. As x approaches 0 from above, which is what's happening at this lower bound of integration, we see that t will be approaching, let's see, 1. And that is from below. And then as x approaches 1 from below, we see that t approaches 0 from above. So that's going to show us how to change our bounds of integration. Okay, so now we can rewrite this thing as the limit as n goes to infinity. I'll put this minus n out front. So we have minus n and then the integral from 1 to 0. Because here, x equals 0 corresponds to t equals 1. And then we'll have t to the n, natural log of n times 1 minus t dt. Now before moving on, I'm going to take this minus sign here, get rid of it, and use it to change the order of the bounds of integration. So I'll have an integral from 0 to 1, which is a little bit more standard. Then I'm going to use logarithm rules to rewrite this natural log of a product of the sum of natural logs. So this is exactly the natural log of n plus the natural log of 1 minus t. So that means I can separate that out into two integrals. And that's exactly what I'll do. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. I have n times natural log of n, which I can take out, the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n dt. So that comes from this bit right here. And then from the other bit, I will have the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n, natural log of 1 minus t dt. And that is going to be from this bit right here. Okay. So I think that's starting to look good. Now, while we're at it, let's integrate this pink underlined integral out just because that's fairly simple. So taking the antiderivative will give us t to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Evaluating at 0 and 1 will give us 1 over n plus 1. And then maybe we'll take this value, plug it in and then bring our current situation to the top, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so this is where we're currently at. And now I think maybe our next good step will be to take care of this integral, which I will underline in green. And then maybe I'll likewise make a green box over here describing our strategy for evaluating that integral. Well, notice it's an integral involving an inverse function. That generally tells us that we should use integration by parts. And when we've got an inverse function, we let our u part be the inverse function, and then dv is everything else. 
So just to be really thorough, let's let u equal the natural log of one minus t. So that makes du equal to minus one over one minus t times dt, just by taking the derivative. And then dv is the rest of that stuff. So that'll be t to the n dt, which makes v equal to t to the n plus one over n plus one. Okay, so that's a pretty good setup for our integration by parts. Now let's just recall the integration by parts formula so we're all on the same page. It's the integral u dv equals u v minus the integral of v du. So now let's maybe see what we've got. We have the limit as n goes to infinity. And then let's notice I've got an n plus one term in the denominator here. And then for the u times v and the v du term, I'll have an n plus one in the denominator. So that means I can bring an n plus one out of this whole denominator, leaving me with n over n plus one. And then inside I'll have the natural log of n and then plus u times v. But notice I've taken care of the n plus one in the denominator. So I have t to the n plus one natural log of one minus t evaluated from zero up to one. So that might seem a little bit problematic when we're letting t approach one, but it'll all sort out when we add the other integral in. Okay, and then we'll have minus the integral of v du. So that's going to turn into a plus because we've got this minus sign here. So we have plus the integral from 0 to 1 of t to the n plus 1 over 1 minus t dt. So we have something that looks like that. And now we're going to do a bit of a trick. So I'm going to take this t to the n plus 1. Actually, now that I look at it, I'm going to take this minus sign and reintroduce a minus sign here. Then I'm going to take this minus t to the n plus 1 and write it as 1 minus t to the n plus 1 minus 1. And that's just so I can clear the denominator in a nice way. Okay, so let's see what we have. We have the limit as n approaches infinity, n by n plus 1, natural log of n comes down. And then notice when we plug zero into this, there is no problem. And then I have plus t to the n plus one natural log of one minus t being evaluated from zero to one. We'll take care of that in just a second. And then minus the integral from zero to one of one minus t to the n plus one over one minus t minus one over one minus t dt. And so now let's notice we've got some simplification. So first of all, this guy right here will turn into one plus t plus t squared ending at t to the n. And that's just by the finite sum of the geometric series. So that's still integrated from zero to one. Great. And then let's see what we have here. So this thing in yellow has a nice antiderivative. So the antiderivative will be minus the natural log of one minus t. So notice we've got a lot of minus signs in here. We have one here, one here, and then we pick up a third from taking that antiderivative. We need to evaluate that from zero to one. Again, evaluating at one is problematic, but we'll combine it with this thing right here. Okay, so let's write one more line on this board and then we'll bring it to the top. So this is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity. Then we have n by n plus 1. This will be the natural log of n plus, so evaluating each of these at 0 is no problem. Evaluating at 1 will require a limit. So this is going to be the limit as t goes to 1 from below of, let's see what we have, t to the n plus one minus one times the natural log of one minus t. You might be a little bit worried that I combined this with this when it seems like in a previous step that came from separate integrals, but they really did not come from separate integrals. They came from the same integral right here, which was calculated via integration by parts. Okay, so let's just reiterate, these two things that have been underlined in purple becomes this thing right here, which I have overlined in purple. And then finally, I have to subtract off this thing right here. 
But notice taking the antiderivative of that is quite simple. We'll just have one plus t squared over two plus t cubed over three. Evaluating at zero and one will pretty clearly give us one plus half plus ending at one over n plus one. Okay, so that's starting to look good. So now let's bring that to the top and then we're pretty much ready to finish it off. Okay, so on the last board we ended at the following spot. We've got our limit as n goes to infinity, all of this stuff, and then inside of that, this limit as t goes to one from below of this t to the n plus one, t to the n plus one minus one over one minus t. So I'm gonna take this plus here, turn it into a minus by switching the order of this. We have one minus t to the n plus one. And then from there, I'm gonna take this one minus t to the n plus one and observe that I can write it as one minus t times, I'll just call it p of t. It's the polynomial that we saw on the last board, but I think writing it as p of t is sufficient here. It's just some polynomial. Great, and now that we have that sorted out, let's take this entire thing and then calculate it down here. So notice now we have the limit as t goes to one from below of p of t times the natural log of one minus t. And then this is gonna be all over one over one minus t. And I wrote it like that because now we have an indeterminate form. So that means we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's use L'Hopital's rule once, take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. That'll start by giving me p prime of t over the natural times the natural log of one minus t and then plus p of t over let's see one minus t and then in the denominator i have one over one minus t quantity squared. Now as t goes to 1, we see that this guy right here comes up and cancels this thing in the denominator, and that will go to 0. It's a little bit sketchy doing this one piece at a time, but I think it's not too bad. Okay, and then now we can take subsequent derivatives n times until this is a constant. So we know p is of degree n, so that means we need n total derivatives. So after n total applications of L'Hopital's rule, we have the limit as t goes to one from the left, the nth derivative of t times the natural log of one minus t over, I believe it will be n factorial over one minus t to the n plus one. So that's taking n derivatives of that denominator. Okay, so now this thing is a constant. So that means when we take the derivative here, we no longer have to use the product rule. And what we'll see is that this will turn into a one over one minus t. The one over one minus t to the n plus one will flip up and we'll see that this thing goes to zero. Okay, so that means all of this over here trends off towards zero, which means we're left with this object right here as you can see, this bit of the limit approaches minus gamma from our definition over here. And then this bit of the limit approaches one, just because that's a fairly simple sequence. So in the end, the limit is minus gamma, and that's the value for our integral. So that clears up our final goal.